All right. So today we're going to be going from diamond to master. What what are the keys between diamond and master? What do master players master? It's technically master, not masters. I, whatever. Uh, what do master players masters? I I, I can't turn that off. Five years. Masters players do that diamond players don't. Uh, it's all in the details for the most part. Uh, there are a lot of diamond players who got there off the back of a certain build or a certain strategy or something like that. I'm not playing battle on the board. Um, and there are a lot of diamond players who got there just because they understand the basics but don't have a build. Um, but masters players have both for the most part, not all. So in diamond, the real focus is on identifying if you're doing something entirely wrong, like you're doing attacks that are never going to work, even though you think they will and they used to work, uh, or if you're doing a lot of things somewhat, what the fuck? A moth. Scared the shit. A moth. Just like. Professional. <laughs> but yeah. Um, there, there are two types of diamond players, is what I'm trying to say. Those who do one thing very right. Uh, and then those who do a lot of things slightly wrong. Um, and in my experience, there's a pretty even split between them. Alright. And of course we're going to be telling race. Another it doesn't game, really matter what race. It's about decision making, it's about the basics. And in ZVZ, the first thing I'm going to do is send that Overlord across. Now, some ba basic things as a Zerg player that even at a higher level, uh, a lot of players don't do is just have good Overlord placements. SC2Swarm.com has a guide by pro players on just basic Overlord placements, where they should go in the early game, so you can defend, like you can see any things like proxy rexes, cannon rushes. In ZVZ, you know if Zerglings are attacking you. These are basic things, but if you make a mistake and your Overlord's out of position, well, obviously that's not good. Looks like he didn't trust me. He drone scouted. Doesn't matter to me. It's not It's not an early pool or anything like that. It's none of that. But the drone scout does mean he will have vision. Not that that's particularly surprising. It's also very likely he already went for a hatchery. Um, because a drone scout that early is not to put a spine crawler in my base and do an early pull. It could be, but it's not. It's because he didn't trust me. All out of minerals. Uh, no or do. just because he likes drone scouting. I don't think drone scouting is necessarily a terrible thing to do. Um, the reason a lot of players don't drone scout is because overlords get there by the time you can really respond to most things anyways. But it does have its benefits. Like, if I was going for that super... And we saw the drone on the way across. If I was going for a super early pool, well then, he would know. He would have that little bit of benefit. Of course, he'd have a little bit less money because there's a drone across the map. But that's what it comes down to. Alright. I'm going to get four Zerglings here. This is just to make sure... Any Zerglings he sends across, I can meet. I'm going to send mine across as well. The Queen should be up by the time his Zerglings come. I'm going to check for the creep. I'm going to pull the OV back to the closest position where I can still see if he's moving out with Zerglings, but far enough away that it won't just get killed by a Queen. All right, we see creep. I'm going to move the OV back here, which is quite a ways away, send the Zerglings out, and then make my Baneling Nest. I like to use camera locations. If you're not using camera locations, uh, I have a two-minute guide on it. But I use them for all the races, not just as Zerg, to flip between my bases. Looks like he is going to go for the OV, which means I will kill the Queen. I mean, that's the trade-off there. And he was doing this to hide his Zerglings, it looks like. I'm going to get a third, but I'm making an Overlord now. Oh, he's getting a Bane Nest. Gonna get a couple more drones. Killing a queen early is already really nice for me. So. Macro. 
So now I have vision. He doesn't have a third base. I killed a queen, which is great. I have a third. And in ZVZ, it's not necessarily about who can make all the wings and banks. I'm going to put this overlord over here. I'm going to bring these banes up, and we're rallying zerglings out right now. It's about when you transition into roaches. I'm going to get a couple banes on this side. I like using a separate hotkey for the banelings. Obviously, it's a strong choice. Your dedication will be I'm sending out a few zerglings. I also have a tutorial on basic link bane micro. Like, for the purposes of this quote-unquote guide, we're not going to be going too much into the micro, but more the decision-making is a key point. Now I've got money. I'm going to get a roach one. He's continuing to send out lings. My overlords can see that. But I've already sent in two bane links. Try to get a connection and kill some drones. Going to get an evolution chamber, a second gas. Uh, I'm waiting until about 30 drones before I try for that second gas. I like to put a couple banes just out on the map. So when are you not looking at your zerglings? Usually when they're in the middle of the map, right? Because you can't just stare at your zerglings the entire time they're running across the map. So just having a bane link out in these somewhat random locations uh, can be really helpful. But right now, I know I have a higher drone count, not only because I killed some drones, but because I already had them before. Looks like the baneling got a connection. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on his third. But right now, I'm making drones. I'm adding on gas as we get to 3540 uh, drones. I'm going to get my plus one attack, and I'm getting the lair for roach speed is where we're going with this. Try to snipe a queen here. I'm going to pull these lings off to distract his zerglings, like this, and get a scout. We see he's got a lair on the way. He's running. They're keeping him busy. I've almost got my lair done. I'm going to go up to 52 drones is already really nice, to be honest. 52 drones in ZVZ is a very comfortable amount. Uh, so we're actually going to stick with that, and I'm going to go for a plus one roach timing. Because one, I have a lair quicker. Two, I'm going to have speed quicker. So if I have speed and I have plus one attack on my roaches, which is the upgrade to go for, then I'm going to have an easy timing. And this is two. And if I, if I see he's going to defend this, well, then we just back off. Like, the objective now is to go for the third. And then from there... I'm just going to work on this here. I'll get some creep drop. You're a little low on gas there. But I move out when my speed's about two-thirds of the way done. Because um, I don't want to show him I'm moving out yet, ideally. But if it's two-thirds of the way done, then that means right as I get there, the speed's going to kick in. The roaches are going to be at maximum strength. My plus one will be kicking in around the same time. As we see now, I do use the select all army key, but I use it to select all my roaches. I hit the select all army key, which the hotkey is tilde for me. Um, and then control click on the roaches and then control one. And now I have my roaches on a hotkey. Then I build my roaches, control click, shift one. And the roaches that are building are queued into the hotkey as well. And I'm making sure before I get into the fight, I have my injects. I don't get supply blocked. And now we focus on the roaches. He's made way too many drones. I show up. He's significantly overdone it here. So if he had a lot of roaches, I would just start poking at the third and try to get that uh, instead of going for the kill. But we go for the kill and we get it. Thank you, David, for giving the gift of winner to Adol Jato. We both had the same actions per minute. Um, but I would say one of us used them a little more efficiently. As you can see, if you look at the drone count, uh, of course he was behind because he made so many Zerglings early on and didn't really do anything with them. Um, so he was trying to catch up, but I had already used my lead to get the Roach one to get the plus one uh, and not really worry about that. Thank you, Dave. Your dedication will be rewarded.
All right, so Protoss versus Terran. Now we're just going to focus on playing really safe. If you watch pro games, you're going to see a lot of Blink Stalker early on plays. Um, I think Blink Stalkers are good. I don't think it's necessary to go for Blink, because the, the weakness of Blink Stalkers is that if you're not active, if you're not out on the map, just constantly putting on pressure, Blink Stalkers aren't actually better than other builds. Like, uh, I, I think going for Colossus early and forcing the Terran to respond and just getting upgrades, because a lot of Terran players, there are two types of Terran players. They're the Terran players who always feel like Protoss will have these deadly units, and there's no way you can kill them. Uh, so we'll always try to put on a ton of pressure. So if you just defend, they can't do anything. Uh, and then there are the Terran players who just think they can't attack a Protoss and will try to macro up. And that's when you get the death ball and you roll over. I'm sending out the scout after the game. So in that case, <laughs> as my voice cracks, in that case, then we just get the army because that is true. At Protoss usually has the initiative when it comes to the more damaging types of units like Storm and Colossus. So this game, I'm just going to go for pretty early Colossus unless I see that he's committed to like a one base all in or something like that. Well, we kill the SCV, which is nice. We check for no second gas, which means no super quick like reactor cyclone or something like that, which would be scary. So I'm going to leave and I'm going to hide the probe in the corner. And then at about 2 minutes and 15 seconds, I'm going to come back in. Because if he makes a Reaper, if he ma the Reaper comes out right around uh, the 2-minute mark. Um, and that means it'll be most of the way across the map. And I'll come back in and try to harass the SCV building at Command Center. Which either the Reaper has to come back or his Command Center gets delayed. So. And I'm going to be building a Stalker first. So we're coming back in. The Reaper should be coming across the map. Chrono Boost, my first Stalker. And the first tech building I'm going for will be a Robo. I would rather the SCV not be here to see it, though. Oh, he does have a Marine. So we're just going to go home then. You've maxed your line he doesn't need to know about credits. this. I'm going to hide this in the corner. The SCV. Oh, he might see it. Even if he does see it. All right. Even if he does. That's not a big deal. Because a robo is the one thing, like, as a Terran, you're not like, ah, he's going robo. It's time to go for my trademark battlecruiser rush. I don't think so. so. I'm just going to be continuing to build stalkers out of this. Not enough minerals. We'll harass. It's, it's probable he'll get a factory and a cyclone behind. It's not guaranteed, but uh, it's probable. I'm chrono boosting probes because right now we're still pretty far off doing anything else. That's smart of him, to keep the Marines on that high ground. Um, I'm going to go around here, be a little bit sneaky. But we're actually just rushing Colossus. Now, if he was doing a more like pressure-focused build, it wouldn't be good to just go straight for the Rebel Bay. It would be, it would probably kill me, um, because he could attack me with anything. But it looks like he's just building. He has a bunker. So he's focused a bit on defense here. So that means he's not just outright all-out attack. I'm just going to poke in. I poked to see if there was maybe like a cyclone or some hellions back there is what I wanted to look for. Didn't find anything. I'm going straight for the Robo Bay. I'm going to get two observers as well. One for here, one, one for the other side, one for my side. Get the gases on 40 probes. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit late on that for me, but... Research complete. I'm going to get Warp Gate. I'm going to start a Colossus. And also, I need to make sure I get a Sentry or two very soon. Because I want to start building up that energy. I probably should have gotten these gases a little earlier. We're going to get this Observer and put in Surveillance Mode out here to see anything coming in. I'm going to get one Shield Battery in the front to defend and just continue building those pylons. I'm going to send this Observer into the main to see what he has. I want to have at least two sentries, ideally three. And we're going to get a forge here. Right around the five minute mark. We see a tech lab on this. He's adding another barrack, so he's going for bio. That could be a raven here. It, it's probably not a banshee. We see he's not researching cloak. Uh, is another important point. 
getting Thermal Lance isn't that important early, but I do want it as time goes on. You must construct additional pylons. I know, Day 9. I'm sorry. Hey, look. Day 9's making StarCraft 2 guides again, guys. Uh, I'm just here to help him along, okay? Probes and pylons, and you've forgotten pylons. Mm. Oh, that could be really bad. It was really bad. So we got a good hit off there. Um, really good. And he gets this out. So we're just gonna chrono boost probes. I'm gonna take a third. By the time I'm getting towards 50 probes. And also want my Twilight Council as well. I haven't decided if I'm going for Blink or for Charge yet, or maybe just straight to Archons. Probably not straight to Archons. But even through that, it's not a huge deal. So what's going to happen is if he eventually counters the Colossus. Now, I took some hits, but you don't need to worry about it, because when he goes for Widow Mind Drop, you got to think. If he went for Widow Mind Drop, we saw how late the production was. Um, AK, like, he didn't have additional barracks, so we can't follow that up. There's nothing coming after that for him. Uh, I'm going to add pylons out here. These are to see anything on the way over to my side. I'm going to go, I'm going to go for the charge. Um, and we're going to try to switch it up here. Because the idea is he already saw the Colossus, so he's already working to counter the Colossus. By the time he does, I want the next step, which is Storm. But these pylons, it's very important as a Protoss player. Uh, it's very important. Also, I missed a key timing. Right around 50 probes is when you want to add on additional gates. Maybe maybe a little bit later if you feel safe. But I need to go up to 5, 6, 7 gates here. He sees the third. Oh, he has a raven out there. Okay. I use the surveillance mode. We're going to get the double upgrades. And he has a strong attack coming out. So what I'm going to do is I can't let that attack just show up without me seeing it. That's a simple part of it. We're going to get Storm here. I'm going to Chrono Storm. Okay, we see he is moving out. Let's keep these Chronos up. I've got more gates finishing. Your dedication will be rewarded. Now he can disable my Colossi, remember, is a concern here. But I'm waiting till Storm. I'm trying to buy time. I'm trying to keep him away right now, is what I'm doing. Stay away from me. This is my safe space. My per stay out of my personal space. All right. Personal space. Uh, just, just stay away. Stay out of my personal space. As a Protoss, your personal space should be about your entire half of the map, ideally. That's why we have this observer here. All out of minerals. No, your forces are under attack. I can pop the Raven, maybe. Research complete. Hopefully it wasn't Neo's As we continue to warp in. He hasn't moved back here. And storms are pretty good. I can take the two Templar that stormed and morph an Archon out of them. Done. But if he stays out there, he's going to have a bad time. Yes, As we're continuing yes. this upgrade, Just these upgrades. Let's see if I've he's still down there. I've been for over two years, and I just started playing two weeks ago. Thanks for all of the guides and Thank enjoyable you. viewing experience. Hashtag Gold League Life. Smiley face. Upgrade complete. Glad you enjoy. So what I'd like to do is, if I get into a good position, is have a Templar in every base. Just a safety Templar. A double drop comes in, I have a storm. Uh, if, like, well, that's pretty much the biggest threat, but, or, or feedbacks or anything like that. But I'm splitting off units in order to have vision on every side of the map. I'm going to get a few more Templar, three or four for storm, usually is good. I'm adding on more gates, throw the chrono into upgrades. If you don't know what else to use it on, upgrades are always a good choice. I've got my fourth base. I'm going to warp in over here. We're going to get a warp prism, and this is going to be 
Uh, my biggest tool. The War Prism is my biggest tool to actually finish the game. Let's check that probe count. 81, that's a bit on the high side. 75 is a, a pretty money number. I'm going to get a couple Archons in the front. They're good to just have in general. We're going to add on some pylons for that vision. I have control of most of the map. The warp prism I'm going to send towards the main. The army I'm going to move out towards the left side. We've got the Templar on the way up. I should get Blink just to have it. We see him taking this base. So what he's going to want to do, make sure I don't go through the sensor tower here. What he's going to want to do is clear out that Zealot. We send his entire army to do it. We About to find out. Upgrade complete. So I'm going to send in the War Prism first because the War Prism has less potential units. Let's see, does he have any turrets? He has one turret. That's not enough. Just go kill them. And we'll send it into the mineral line as I hit on this side. We'll bring this back as I bring the main army onto the right side. All right, the zealots are in the main. We'll let them continue doing that. I'm just kind of killing things in the main. There's no reason to attack here if I'm already in a comfortable position. I can get a Stargate or two in case he has ranged Liberators. He did that, but like, that doesn't really do anything now. We've got the Storm. GG. But the keys are realizing if he can actually attack. Like, if he does a Widow Mind Drop and he kills 10 probes, even though he killed 10 probes doesn't mean I have to play, like, super defensive. I can just go take another base because if he did a Widow Mind Drop, that means he doesn't have a bunch of barracks and is going to attack me right now. Uh, the key when you're going for those power units like Colossus early are knowing when you can be greedy. Because if you're not greedy, um, even if you do have these super strong units, he can eventually just have a better economy and run you over. Wow, Diamond 2 is a very large league. <laughs> Apparently, it's like 300. I, I knew Diamond was a large. That's why we're doing this guide, right? It is possibly the largest league in StarCraft now. I know Silver and Diamond are the largest. Um, but it might be Diamond, especially with all the new players coming in. Uh, looks like we're going to be playing Protoss against Nerf Protoss, the Terran player. So, um... Well, we already know where he stands. Eventually. Unfortunately, most of his issues with Protoss might not come from the balance of Protoss, but from the fact he plays on a Windows 98. No fun. No fun allowed. This is this game is not for having fun. All right. If I wanted to have fun, I'd play. Oh. Your probe is so upset you can't build it. He's on a crusade. All right. And like many crusades, uh, it's more based on feeling than logic. 
but uh, you gotta respect a man who's committed. So. All right, immediately going for the chrono. All out of minerals, no can do. I actually like to just use two chronos against Terran. There are very few things that you're going to need that chrono for, unless he's like proxying at your base, essentially. So. Alright, let's see how many gases. Just the one. I'm going to go ahead and drop down the Nexus. Why are you not leaving the base? Go away. Make sure he doesn't steal my gas. I can block him with a whole position. I mean, another way to block him from stealing my gas is to steal it myself. Now, it's not as important as it was with the Mothership Core in order to place pylons around your mineral line, but you still want the ability to put shield batteries and warp in. These are still important concerns. This guy was very diligent, and he found the probe. Not a, not a big loss, but uh, good for him. We're going to chrono out the Stalker. The chrono lasts almost the build time of the Stalker. Now, he just assumes the worst, doesn't he? Actually, I'm not going to send this probe down, because the Reaper could be there. He, he You you can kind of get a story. Um, just because I have a probe there doesn't necessarily mean proxy Stargate. But we know he's been hurt before. All right. He's obviously been hurt before. So. Uh, let's not bring up past trauma. Almost able to get it, but not quite. I'm going to get three stalkers out of this. Gonna get an observer here. And two more gateways. I'm actually gonna get them before the Robo Bay. Because I don't know what he's doing. I don't have a tell right now. Thank you, Cross. So I, I don't. I might need just sheer units here. Like if he does a cyclone push or something like that, I might just need the units. Is the situation? So. We're gonna poke. He has a cyclone, but I do have three stalkers, which means the cyclone isn't a huge threat. And I'm getting these gas geysers. The cyclone is mostly defensive. Uh, he's not going for an attack, it looks like, so. Getting the gases down here. We're going to get a pylon in the back. I'm going to warp in a couple sentries. Got to be careful with the observer. You don't want it dying right off the bat. Just really want to make sure I have that energy. We see he's going for Cloak Banshee. So I can still go. Now, a good counter to Cloak Banshee, in general is just having shield batteries, because the shield batteries... Uh, I'm going to get another Observer, though, because I would... Well, I have one at home. I can start my Colossus. The shield batteries will just reshield the probes as they take hits from the Banshees. Anything that doesn't one-shot things isn't so great against shield batteries in general. Nice job, me. But we're going to start a Forge here as well. And since I know what he's doing now, I'm pretty safe to take a third somewhat soon. I want to move this away. The surveillance mode observer actually makes a whistling noise. Your that can be, be heard. Your line of mineral credit. I am here the I'm going to chrono out here. But since we know his tech, and I already have... The probes are falling. I'm 
not sure what happened over here to block my third, but we're going to start the plus one and try to get that third base started. A Hellion. An interesting choice. He's sending out siege tanks to this side. Or so it seems. Let's go see if he's continuing on this road. I'm going to leave two stalkers at the back in case he continues the siege tanks. We're going to get the twilight. And I'm going to get a few more probes queued up. And we're getting additional gates. But we saw siege tanks move out, so... I'm gonna get a second forge. As well, those upgrades, so key. Why, why is... I don't know what that siege tank's doing. Well, I'm gonna try to look for a third, just in case he has it really early. We're actually going to get Blink this game because I've built so many Stalkers. I will just Chrono it out, and then I will get Charged behind. He doesn't know about the Colossus yet, but I can start the Templar Archives. Transferring over probes. He doesn't know about the Colossi yet, um, for sure, but... There's the risk. I'm going to get a cannon behind each mineral line. Because there's still that Banshee threat. I don't think it's a large one. What are you doing with this? He's just splitting off Marines. I'm going to send out an Adept to try to kill those. Which it should be pretty Adept at. Your dedication will be rewarded. He saw the Templar Archives, but he, he might not realize the Colossi is the situation right now. I can try to get all the gates up. Mineral field empty. Send those it looks like he's taken a third. I'm not 100% sure. But all signs point to yes on that. If the siege tanks move out, that's when I'm going to start building immortals as well. But if he's just going to sit back and let me chrono boost upgrades, well then I'm going to sit back and I'm going to chrono boost upgrades. That's how it is. Get the charge now that I finish blink. I've got 70 probes. We're going to get more observers out on the map as well. But I'm going to get some observers. Looks like he's going towards the fourth. Upgrade complete. Mineral. He's gonna have five Templar for Storm. Research oh, he has Speed Cloak Banshees. My this is, uh, so it looks like he's actually going mech. So I got caught a little bit off guard by this, is the situation. So I'm gonna have we're gonna split the Templar to the bases. Cause one feedback well one set of feedbacks will decloak the banshees. So this is gonna be a little more I'm adding a Stargate because I might eventually need to go Tempest. That wasn't ideal. I may eventually need to go Tempest is the situation. We're kinda lining the base with cannons. I just continue the upgrades. What, what, what in the hell are you doing here? Very well. Not there is a wild Thor. Our minds are as and I don't have detection we here. It looks like he's actually going to move out. Research complete. Hopefully it wasn't We're going to get some Archons involved. That will soak a lot of the damage. Gonna get a War Prism as well, as continue these upgrades. I should have these Observers with me. We're gonna transfer some probes over to this base.
Okay. We're gonna get a fleet beacon. We need more Archons. And make sure we have enough Storm. What this comes down to now... Oh, it looks like he wants to actually fire. I still just need to hold on. I have plenty of probes. Is the situation. Uh, I have plenty of probes. So I just need to not get caught out of position without detection. Is the simple version. I've got observers pretty much everywhere. Let's get some Archons involved. Shield batteries are pretty good. And this is one of those games where patience is a virtue. I'm going to start building Tempest. We're going to get ranged attack upgrades for the Tempest. I really should have more Immortals as well. But this is kind of like an Immortal Archon sort of game. And once I add on these Stargates... You gotta be patient, is the summary. You're dealing with this, you gotta be patient. Does he have any upgrades on these? He has 1-1 one, one on his ship weapons. Looks like here's his army. Warping and charge lots. The charge lots are for the actual fight. That's why observers are so important. He has some battle cruisers involved. Unfortunately, I'm maxed out with 84 probes, which is too high. So I'm going to throw some probes away. You know what? I can fight that. Just do a little bit of splitting here. And then immediately go back, but... We will win the fight. Gonna make some more Tempest. But yeah, we have the right type of units here. Upgrade complete. Time for a timing push? Make sure I replace the Templar. Gonna warp in Zealots on the uh, left side here. I actually need some more gates. And a Dark Shrine. back off for now, but we've got more Tempest, so I can warp in more Zealots. I can Chrono Boost across the board. As we slowly work through, got a couple more gates, get more shield upgrades. Why not have this base? Another round of Zealots on the left side. Looks like these are all planetaries, but we'll continue working through. The models are doing okay for them. The charge lots on either side. This is actually the time for stalkers. I have an immortal back here as well. Now. 
shall be. Mineral field empty. Send those workers to The zealots do have plus three armor and plus one sheep. All right, we're gonna add in the war prism with the army. To reinforce, warping another round of stalkers. These, the stalkers are just gonna chunk up the PCs. Good game. And when you're dealing with that type of Terran, the key is patience. 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 Uh, if you attack in and just throw away all your units, that's how they win. Don't let the Turtle Terran win. Just sit back, relax, uh, build the right units rather than as quickly as possible. It, it is a, especially on a map like that where it's difficult to attack in. Um. You just gotta, you gotta do it, you gotta take it slow. Uh, like the battle cruiser. How would you have played that from the other side? Well, I probably wouldn't have gone for mech in general. Especially not turtle mech. I actually like, like, I think there's a place for, like, the speed banshee builds. I think they're pretty good. But if your follow-up is then to lose all your siege tanks and not really have anything but siege tanks into battle cruisers, then it's very easy. Everything has a hard counter there. And we're live. All right, time for some Terran. Terran versus Protoss. So now we're on the other side of things. I'm not going to be playing mech. Uh, I'm going to be going for bio. Yeah, and Stalkers, especially with upgrades, are very good. Like, Stalkers in the last patch got a buff. Um, besides the fact that they attack slower but do more damage, um, that means each attack, armor has less overall effect because armor takes away from each attack. If the Stalker's just sitting there firing, it has the same DPS. But you might know in StarCraft fights, you're not always attacking constantly all the time. So that means each volley from the Stalkers it, it can do... Um, have a greater effect because effective DPS is high. Also on top of that, they now get two bonus damage from each upgrade as opposed to one. They just got one before. So it's plus three. They're actually doing three more damage than they did before. Just very simply. So that is why Stalkers are, I mean, they're still not the greatest unit to have in your later game army, uh, except in specific scenarios. Like, they're very bad against siege tanks. I mean, they're good at killing siege tanks, but to kill a siege tank, you have to get close to it. I figured this out. Um, I should be taking this, but I think he is blocking it. This is a little sloppy for me. I'm, I'm thinking too much about Protoss and not enough about Terran. Except it can transport workers. Big job, huh? Go chase that probe down. He's taking the second gas. And I'm going for a three racks play because he stole my gas. This is just to put on some bio pressure here. I should be getting this. But the idea is I'm just going up to stim pretty quick. I have no idea where that probe went. Very sneaky probe. Can I still get out? Uh oh. Oh, he gave up on life. Which is good for me. 
But since he stole my gas, I can take the gas on the low ground. That's not a huge concern overall. I do need to get a bunker because stalkers are able to micro so well. And we're going to bring the Reaper back in to try to get a beat on what his tech uh, his tech choice is going to be. Now, if he figures this out, it, it's pretty easy to counter if he just gets shield batteries and the like. Where is your tech? Is this man proxying a Stargate? Oh, he's doing kind of a hero-esque style here. And what I mean by that, he's walling off against what could potentially be Hellions. But I'm just going to do a big stim time. All right. And if he doesn't figure this out, because he doesn't have a robo very early. There is a pylon and shield batteries on the way. So we're going to... Of course, units don't get healed by shield batteries if they're dead. Get this gas up. And avoid it. This is actually a pretty hardcore cheese here. We need more Marines, is the summary. Lots more Marines. At some point, I will have Stim. And he will run out of energy. This was something. I guess that was his, a one base all in. Let's see where he put the Stargate. Yeah, I got into his base. I suspected a Stargate um, because he just didn't have tech when I came in with the Reaper. But when an Oracle didn't come in, I, I thought, okay, maybe he's just playing real greedy or something. Nope, that probe didn't go home. It built a Stargate, but we just kind of made enough units in defense. So that's that's a key point. If you build enough units, you can kind of just kill things. Uh, so in stealing my gas, it also helped me out because it kind of forced me down the barracks route, which means I had enough marine. So. Mm. To make it back in this rage and see. Now, I, I hope to get another um, tearing game. But thank you, Cross uh, Dude in Basement 1. And Jish for the subs as well. Thank you for joining us. But that's what Diamond is all about. Like, I didn't know exactly what he was doing. I just took basic precautions. I didn't really get supply blocked. It looks like we're going to have Terran again. Yes, yes, yes. Just as I deserve. And so our game I wouldn't derive only started playing SC2 since it became F2P. I've played like F2P. 10 games total, but I wanted to give you this replay. I will do... Three can both you and Chad roast my bronzy game. Lots of the love lesson three. I will do a uh, bio build here. I'll do mech the next one. I actually prefer personally mech right now in TVZ, but I still think bio is probably the more popular and in a lot of situations better. But this is the matchup where mech can definitely uh, have its day. Go ahead. Mech my day. But we're going to go for Hellions into just a stim push. 
uh, which can put a lot of pressure on. It's still going to be a Hellion opener. Hellions can transition to Bile very easily. But just Reaper, Hellion, Starport, and then Adion Barracks afterwards. Just because you're going, just because you're going bio, doesn't mean you have to go bio the entire time. Hellions are a great unit. They're relatively cheap. They only cost minerals, and uh, they they defend against all sorts of. Well, Baneling buffs are very popular, not only in Diamond in general, um, but you'll see a lot of things like that. And having a reactor factory, like if he does a Roach push, then I can make Cyclones. You've maxed your line of mineral credit. Go ahead. Okay, we get into his main. Yep. With the, the SCV scout. We up. see no gas. I'm going. Which means he has no option You're for Zergling high. speed very early. But he's going to have more minerals and maybe try to expand. I'm going to get one marine and then get a factory. Because if I just get a reactor oh, now... That will delay my reactor to Hellions, because uh, it will delay my factory, because I don't have the gas. So one Marine, it can poke away Overlords. Um, it can just push them away. And then I can get the reactor when I have enough gas here. Let's see if we can kill any drones. I mean, killing any drones is nice, but killing... Oh, he dodged it. Okay, no more fancy micro. I don't need to. I have two idle SCVs. It's almost worse than killing just a single drone. AKA, I lost more money than he did, but I did force a lot out there. Run away. And we see he's going for a creep tumor first. Which means he has... So, if you're up against someone who's going to go for really heavy queen play, which it looks like our friend here is doing, then the best counter is not Hellions. It's not Banshees. It's just straight by. Just a big push. Um, because that can be used. And we know he's not going to have speed, by the way. He didn't have gas, so he's not going to have speed. You are now the proud I can start the stim. I'm going to get a Viking to push away Overlords to start. And he has this third very early. And I can pressure with the Hellions as well. We got the Viking out. I'm going to get one Liberator to follow this up. That can maybe pull his Queens out of position, which can be very useful. And now an important timing not to miss is adding on your production. I'm adding on two Barracks here, which I don't have a third yet, so it's really focused on putting on this pressure. Okay, if he's going to let me get in, well then... We see a Roach Horn on the way. A lot of gas. His Queen's out of position. Now, it's important while I'm doing this to not completely let everything slip at home. I'm going to use the Select the Army key to select the Liberator. And just send these around in a circle while I make sure I'm doing everything at home. Get NG bays, double gas. I'm gonna try to run down the ramp. Looks like he's blocked me out with the queens. I'm just gonna siege up this mineral line. And it takes a little bit of practice to get to this point where it's like, I can just do these things, but... We can siege up those mineral lines, but they're a little tech. It's like using the select all army key uh, to just select useful units, for example. Gateway. 
I've got more Hellions involved. These Hellions aren't going to make it out. We require more. The add-on completed at the building. You're a little low on gas. Getting the upgrades here. I've got two medevacs on the way. The Reaper made it out. So now the follow-up is going to be a stim push. We're going to move this over. No more minerals, which makes well, with combat shields in a moment, but your supply block. I think I've trapped myself in here, but maybe I can get the queen as well. Maybe we can go up here. I'm using my production while I'm doing this as well. Very important. He's getting roach speed, we see. So let's get pretty heavy on the marauders. But I keep flipping to my production throughout this. Because he's still going to have a lot of roaches when he comes across. And that's the big concern right now. Now I just sit at home, I build up, and I have a much better economy, I have much better infrastructure, I have my production. The only thing that he could do right now is get on my production. Uh, and by that I mean just get up the ramp, essentially. Once I, once I have enough units to comfortably defend, then I'm going to send out one medevac, and then if he seems vulnerable, I'm going to send out the army with 1-1. One, one. Alright, now I feel like I have enough here. He's probably droning up. I'm making tanks. Tanks, obviously incredible. Against roaches, getting an armory. Mineral field depleted. I'm gonna get that third base landed. I'm putting everything together. I use control click to hack it in. Control click marines. Control one. Control click marauders. Shift one. I think I flew past an overlord. Control click tanks. Shift one. Control click medevac. Shift one. Takes a little bit, but then once you got it, makes it easier. And that way you're not using the select all army key, which is essentially going to screw over any type of multitasking you ever pretended to do. Alright. We're going to control F1. Control F1 selects all your idle workers. Uh, obviously every race should know that, but Terrans are definitely the most notorious for having idle workers. So. I'm going to split off a couple marines to see if I'm going to run into death. And I'm making sure I'm continuing production at home. Control F1. He doesn't have a fourth base, so I don't need to kill him right now. Like, he doesn't have an overwhelming amount, but I, I might just be able to kill him right now. Nice spread, got the tank set up. He's got himself in a, his own little trap there. Take out that base. Oh, looks like he was taking that base. We're gonna split this off to go deal with this. Spend my money. Looks like he's gonna try to base trade, but never base trade a Terran. I mean, he has no other option. Yeah, he had this army coming across, which I probably was going to be able to defend as well. All right, and we're going to take a, a short intermission from the Diamond to Master guy uh, for the 10th game of Artisan versus traps
is that the real traps from Korea? But I want to welcome you back. To Bronze League Heroes! Actually, I don't even think they're ranked yet. I'm not entirely sure, but in the bottom right... Your dedication will be rewarded. It is Artisan. That's not how you spell that. And in the top left, it's Traps. All right, a depot at the front, a probe scout at the zero second mark, a pylon, looking go good so far. All right, the SCV waits for its orders, builds the barracks in time. Thank you, Willow, as well, 27 months. And a forge. Of course, the classic tactic. He's done it before, he'll do it again. 44 APM and no shame. A pylon is on the way, does Artisan see it? I mean, technically, yes, we're on the Artisan Action Cam. The Artisan Action Cam brought to you by Waffle House. Um, eat your shame. <laughs> Artisan, it's on the minimap, he doesn't see it yet. He can hear it, he can literally hear it finishing, but he doesn't know. It's right outside, it's right down the ramp. It, the camera, it, it's, it's right, it's happening. It's, he's being cannon rushed. He's being cannon rushed right now. He doesn't know. But the thing is, there's no vision up the ramp. I mean, the probe can come up the ramp, but otherwise there's no vi Oh, cannons! It's a disaster! Oh, out of nowhere, the cannons pop out. But the thing is, this doesn't actually really do anything because it's at the bottom of the ramp, and if the probe is, if the probe, the probe, like, he can just shoot the probe away. Five Marines are queued up. He's trying to get that vision. He gets a little at the top. He's working on the depot. Unfortunately, the Marine gets a little bit too close and fires at the cannon. The wrong choice. You had one job. Traps is at zero APM. He's just watching the cannons do their... Oh, my! And a... Oh, no. Then he realizes if he moves the probe, the cannon rush doesn't work. No, Artisan. Artisan. He, he, all he has to do is shoot the probe. All he has to do. He, he has one mission, one job, one opportunity. The probe has lost its shields. It comes back up. Another couple shots. He gets it, and the rush is over. Yep, the cannons are still there. Uh, the cannons do not become depowered, but a second probe is on the way. This is not over yet. Or is it? He's got 1,000 minerals and four gas. Make that eight. But we're going to go Nexus into follow-up cannons, it looks like. Now, the thing is, these cannons, like, the most they can really kill is our two depots. So, even even if the rush continues, I'm not entirely sure. But Artisan, he's got a factory on the way. He's trying to macro it out. Two wrecks have completed. The SCVs stand by, ready to repair, even though they didn't quite finish the job the last time. Another cannon's on the way. This is not ending. This is not over. We have no gateway. He has gas, but no gateway. He's committed. A second probe. He's doubling down. More cannons on the way. A, a third nexus in a very uh, unorthodox location. Artisan sees it. What will be the play? Siege tanks? There's nothing. He comes back up the ramp. He gets the vision. The, the bunker's just slightly out of range. If it was one hex closer, he could have completely shot this down. The SCVs watch the depots burn. They have not yet paid their bills this month. And I'm sorry, we don't do that socialist repair, all right? It costs money. You can't... Oh, and he tries to repair, but Artisan is supply blocked. Another Marine to its death. And a pylon! No, that the probe is killed! Trying to continue the rush up the ramp. You let him in. You let him take an inch, and they're going to try to take a mile. The first gateway will be built. Another probe comes in. It doesn't work like that. And will be repelled by the wall. And now there is no vision. But once this Nexus finishes, he can build more probes. And then he can use them to also die at the top of the ramp. So far, three workers killed. The cannon is being chipped down. This one Marine recruited for the task. Another bunker. The Nexus finishes. It is 23 to 24 workers. A scan comes out. Manages to scan zero Nexi, but at least he knows there's one here. 
Does not know about this one. A gate being built in the main. A thousand, well, not anymore. We have five zealots queued up. Five zealots for traps. Breaking up this ramp is still going to be difficult. Especially if there's a siege tank on the way. Cannons being reinforced. No cyber core yet. The siege tank could put a stop to all of this. More marines continue to fire at the contain. But, but the lid has been blown off. The cannons at the back. Continuing this uh, less than ideal policy. As we have both players right around 45 actions per minute. Where will those actions be invested? The tank is done. Is it is it able to get over? It, is it walled out? Uh, is it? It can't. Okay, it can go over there. All right. All right, close enough. It will siege. He's breaking out of the cannons, but there are zealots. The zealots will be called to the fight. Once again, the depot is shot in the face, making it difficult for the zealots to engage. The cannons are actually still exacting a price on the marines, but that price is not very high. The depot raced once again. The depot micro is top notch here out of Artisan. And uh, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, and try, and try, and try again. Is the trap's policy. Another zealot. Blown away. The, he will have to move. He has a second tank. No starport yet. Both players with over a thousand minerals in the bank, but the marine count, the probes are evacuated. Realizing that this forward outpost may not stand. The cyber core is done. He has 800 gas. What will be the decision? Give me my triple stargate traps. You know you want to. You know you need to. And he will expand to the next closest location. A, a bold and brash move. Um, maybe not the most ideal. But the most... Uh, it's really a moral victory is what it is. As the tanks continue to break out, he tries to reestablish the contain. A, a zealot will siege up. Actually, I mean, wait, not the, the siege tank will siege up. The, ze the tanks, one more shot. Down goes the cannon. Down goes the pro. His base will be removed, but uh, there are more next eye where that came from. Artisan is starting to run out of money. The scans. He sees the gateways. There is no warp gate. He's just building gateways. There's the warp gate research. The eight minute mark warp gate. A, a, a bit on the later side. There's the starport. But Artisans put together a strong army. Will he use it to go across the map and win the game? Traps has quite literally zero units or defenses. He has no cannons, no zealots, no stalkers, no anything. Uh, just probes and artisans moving across the map. Another scan. He confirms. Another scan. He confirms what he just saw. He sees the twilight. He's moving across the map. What will traps do. He's running out of time before this attack hits. Any second now. An expansion is on the way. Artisan taking his very first base. The siege tanks are forced to take the long road around. Uh, these squares are fat shaming. There is nothing here. There is nothing. Literally nothing. There is nothing to stop him. There is no traps. This base is mining for traps. The probes are just kind of dying. The cannon defense. Not not quite going to do it. Blast it away.
the Dark Shrine. Five stalkers are being built. They're being built. Not warped in. Artisan microing around. Stutter stepping against the gates for maximum DPS. The stalkers come out. The stalkers are immediately removed. The Dark Shrine finishes, but there are no gates to warp it in with. The Dark Shrine falls. Traps will rebuild his base right outside his opponent's base. He has warp gate done, I, I reiterate. And the Stalker is actually in vision range of Artisan here. The Stalker is right there. The, both the Stalkers are right there. He know He scans, he sees it! He knows! He has an army at home. Plenty of STVs waiting uh, for their chance to work. A Dark Shrine is rebuilt. But it seems like Traps has not bamboozled the artisan. And there's two dark shrines. There are two dark shrines on the way to, to warp in DTs twice as fast. Another base will. It's done! It's done! Thank you, Flash. <laughs> Happy holidays. Hope you and oh my god, Traps refuses to give up, Thanks but he's at eight supply, he's at one supply. This is the one. And he doesn't have money. We gotta get those gases though. If there's one thing he needs, it's gas. Has he seen this? I'm not sure, but Traps has tapped out. And that is the classic Cannon Rush defense. Everyone knows it. Thank you, Artisan. All right, and I'm going to get some more water. I'll be right back in one moment. If you haven't yet subbed on YouTube, of course, uh, that's where you can find all the guides, including this one. We're back to the Diamond to Masters guide. Um, I think I've played at least one game of E-Trace so far. We're going to try to play at least one more uh, for this edition. Um, but thank you for watching. I'll be right back. All right. Thank you, Dementos. Your dedication glad you still will enjoy. be rewarded. Thank you, Dementox. I'm glad that you still enjoy. Smile.
Chairman Mouse. <laughs> and Zerg. ZVZ. ZVZ, once again, as Zerg, you gotta get those Overlord placements down. SC2Swarm.com. Uh, you'll find a guide. Uh, if anybody knows of resources like that for the other races as well, I mean, there's spawningtool.com. Uh, Pig has some builds there for each race. If you like the written stuff, I, I'm not, I'm more of a, uh, fuck it, we'll do it live kind of person. Um, but those are some more resources you can find for all the races. I like to go hatch first in ZVC, which does open you up. There are some builds which, if they do it properly, and they're very all-in cheese builds, but they will kill you um, nine times out of ten. Like, if he goes for, like, a 14-14 and hides his Zerglings, uh, and just has Zergling speed and 20 Zerglings, and I don't have Zergling speed, and I don't have Queens, and I don't have Zerglings, like, he's just gonna kill me. But it's, it's, if you have Overlords in the right spot... Uh, if you have just basic scouting, and if they screw it up at all, you can still defend. But they're, the, all mirror matchups are a little bit like that. ZVZ is probably the worst of them. But there are, it's kind of a rock, paper, scissors. Not really. Um, we're talking at the pro level, not at, oh, oops, I just ran 20 Zerglings into a Baneling. But it's really the matchup's fault. I don't <laughs> kind of league. Like right now. And of course, if they go for that really early pool or cheese, and I went for a safer, like a little bit earlier pool before hatch, but I still expanded, I would just be fine, and they would be very far behind. And that's kind of how that works. That's why a lot of players will go for the the hatch first instead. And we see the creep on the way, so I'm gonna back that overlord off to a safe location, or at least relatively safe, where I can see any zerglings trying to sneak out uh, and be pretty far away from any dangerous queens. Queen complete. Uh, and going out for a third base. It's actually, in ZVC, getting the third base up, you don't want this to be pressured by Zerglings. Uh, speaking of Zerglings, I should have made a couple. Um, so getting the third base actually earlier than it feels like you're safe to means it is safe because it'll already be either finished or close to done, which means half a dozen Zerglings aren't going to kill it. But if I took this a little later, and I didn't have lings, and he had six lings and just attacked it, then I wouldn't be getting that third base. That's how that works. Getting a fourth overlord and railing it out to the front. I'm making one mainling. In case 40 zerglings just come spinning out of that base right now. You gotta have safety. The safety bay. All right. We have a roach horn and an evo chamber. So I will get a Roach Horn and an Evo Chamber uh -oh. out of energy. and a Lair. So right now, he is a little bit ahead on the tech. Uh, my advantage is the third base. So I have a couple tro I could maybe try to break down the front no with a big mainling bus, but he already has a lot of queens with a lot of energy. What he doesn't have, uh, well, I'm going to confirm that right now, is a third base. All right, now we've gone up to 40 drones. I'm going to add on these gases. But I need to leverage that production because I'm going to be a little bit... Because it takes time. I have the defender's advantage. I'm on the other side of the map. I'm going to go up to, like... Uh, we'll, we'll see. Is he upgrading out of both Evo chambers or just one? He's upgrading out of one. You see it having a little seizure there. This one is not. Also, we want to see if he starts Roach Speed as well. So he's just getting one upgrade. I'm not sure what he's doing behind this. Is this a quick Nidus Worm, maybe? That's what I'm pretty suspicious of. I get up into the main. 
We see the lair. That was pretty lucky. I can't rely on this happening. But now I just make roaches. Because he just has... Like, he has... I'm going to get full saturation. He has two bases, plus one. Just the plus one, not plus one, plus one, because we saw only one Evo Chamber upgrading. And roaches, and then going to roach speed. I have three bases, and I'm doing that. Three, last I checked, is more than two. So. Cannot confirm, but uh, that's what they tell me. Maybe I should do that. Thank you, Dana. Pro tip. Not enough energy. Unit needs a nap because he has your So I have plus one done. To macro. And I have road speed finishing, so we'll see if I can do anything here. But Not behind this, energy. I'm gonna make a round of drones and rally them to this base. Start and, my plus uh -oh. two. Units out of energy. Um, but then I'm gonna go back into roaches. Enough energy. Fifty-seven Your drones, attack. like if you can get close Still to sixty, you're in a pretty great spot in C V Z. No more minerals, this is not intended to kill him. This is intended to keep God. him honest. Like, if he got too greedy, then I do a lot of damage. I might pressure or kill the third. Does he have plus one? He does. I have slightly more roaches, though. And he's not transfusing. So once again, this keeps him honest while I'm getting everything else behind it. I'm just going to kill queens. MVP Roach? Oh my god. Apparently I'm not going to kill the Queens. But now, he's going to counterattack because he's building units, but I've already restarted building Roaches. Get a Hydra that's done here. Get the Queen out of the way. The idea is, I bought space for my economy. I took a good trade. And we can look at the drone count. This is actually a good game to look at the drone count afterwards. Gonna get the Ravagers, because when they come out of the cocoons, they're at full HP. A lot of free roaches there, because I caught them in a weird pathing area. And, I mean, why not take a fourth? Get the gases over here. I can get a few more drones. I'm gonna transfer out of the main. Ooh, a double prong. Get the cancel off. Does he have the plus two? He doesn't. So we do have to split off. Some free roaches over here. I'm going to get the lurker then. Is kind of the progression here. But I'm not making any hydras just yet. We're putting everything together with the plus two here. He actually snuck these out because my overlords were slightly out of position. All out of minerals. No can do. Your mutation is finished. And I mean that in a good way. Mineral field depleted. You not shoot the ravagers as they're morphing. Waiting to see if he fires any shots. But I have the numbers. And he didn't get plus two behind this. Move away. I ate a couple hits, but... But at this point, the rally point is set on the other side. And it all came down to uh, recognizing what he was doing, pressuring when I could, and then droning when I couldn't really do any damage. Uh, so there's a rhythm to ZVZ where drones units drones units it's not usually it's pretty rare you might see it in pro games because of how high level those players are but usually it's waves of units and then waves of drones is how it works uh which happened this game like i made a, an initial wave of units to see what he was doing on the other side and keep him honest and deny a third and then he didn't have a third so i made drones and, but i had more production quicker so i made units and since he didn't have a third, he didn't have enough. But then he had enough units, so I was droning. Stuff like that. But, um... Let's go to the worker count. He's actually... Oh, he's at 40 at the end, but... The key points uh, are before this first attack. Let's go to the first uh, roach pressure.
Uh, but this is the first Roach Pressure here. He's at 44 drones, and this is right after I made about 10, 11 drones as I started this attack. Because I knew, worst case scenario, I just don't do anything. So, he's not, he can't counterattack me if I'm on top of his third base. So I made about 11 drones there. Uh, I was already a little bit ahead, but now that solidified it. So I go in, I get a trade, and then I pull back, let him attack. And then you manipulate his drone count that way. Like, he's forced to make roaches because he just doesn't quite have enough roaches here. But 57 to 44 workers means... Now, he wasn't spending his money well. That's the problem if you don't inject. Uh, and he, he looked like he was injecting okay, but I'm not sure why he has that much of a bank. Maybe he didn't for a while. But the worker count tells the story. Having 12 more drones means you can just build way more stuff. So. And now he's trying to build drones, but I've already been on a better economy for long. And that's, that's really the key point. Like, as soon as I saw the Roach one in the Evo chamber and no speed, well, get as many drones as I can, but also don't neglect your tech and give them a time. That's the simple part. I think what I'll do with this uh, series... How much more do we have? Um, I'll get to Diamond 1, and then another day we'll go Diamond 1 to Master. Because uh, Diamond is a very large league, and it's going to be a lot of games. But I think that'll be the best one. We do one bit for Diamond 2. Diamond 3, I think, uh, still can learn some from the basic guides. Or... How do you how do you like to make sure there'll be no surprise me to switch? Well, my original another Roach game, attack did that. I confirmed he was building out of the Evo Chamber. Um, and I saw he was building roaches, and I attacked with my roaches. I don't just sit back and say, well, he might have a lot of roaches. I, I moved out when I had roach speed. If he didn't have any units, then it automatically is like, why don't you have units? They're going maybe to mute it. Um, if I hadn't gotten that information earlier, I probably would have sent an overseer in, but I did get it, uh, so I was okay. Oh, shit. I didn't mean, no, that's not like a BM one. Uh, I didn't even realize I did it before. Okay, I was talking, I was distracted. Don't look at me like that. All right, out of I don't. But your workers are on it. You're all out of minerals. No can do. All right, I'm gonna do a very safe, solid TVT build, and it's the mass cyclone. That's not a troll build. It actually cyclone expand can pretty much defend everything. I should have gone gas first. That was a pretty big mistake here. Um, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna hurt. So this is not the build. Um, should have gone gas first. That that uh yeah, that really screws it up. So actually, no, I take it back. We're doing a Reaper expand, which is okay. We're doing we're doing a build a bunker on the high ground because he has. A bunch of marines about to come up your ramp build. Um, not as fun. Not as fun. So never mind. We're doing none of the above. Um, yeah, there it is. And then build a barracks in his base. You can't build there. Your command center's been spruced up. Oh, that is a wall. Just make sure he doesn't float them into my base. Your dedication will be rewarded. This better be good. Will do. Let's see if I can get the Reaper to the other side as well. Okay. He's probably going to pull the SCVs. It's not unlikely. Alright, I'm going to keep a couple SCVs to repair up there. And that's why we have a second bunker as well. I'm going to wait till a couple Marines. 
So he had depots and no gas. I see that. Well, there's a... It, it's not a command center first. It's not a command center first. So, uh... No more minerals, which makes you a macro god. Go, go, go! You gonna give me orders? There go the boys. Where do you think they're going? Look at you. Been waiting on you. That's the first thing he said this game. Okay, now the now another pro tip in in diamond. Don't respawn. Alright. You might die. He actually decided to come home with this. Which is kind of surprising. Instead of just tap out. See if he's still over here. Build Marines, it looks like that's a yes. Oh, he's gonna go into Marauders. So there you go. He doesn't have barracks in his base. They're somewhere. They're somewhere. Thank you, Low Town. 16 moves. Look at you. Look at me. Got your love, got your love, got, got your love tonight. All right, it's Big Hoss, the Zerg player. So I did a bio game last time, right? Did I? Yeah, I did. So uh, we're gonna do a mech game. Good luck and have fun. <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. So, it's gonna open up very similar, just Helly and Banshee can get you very far. You get uh, mildly competent, and a, and a big part of Helly and Banshee is not just throwing away the Hellions desperately trying to kill drones. A lot of, one of the big mistakes I see in Diamond, and I mean it might not feel like a mistake, is throwing away your Hellions. Like, if you throw away six Hellions and get ten drones, that might feel like a victory, but a lot of the time, like, if you throw away your Hellions and you don't have a follow-up of any kind in the next few minutes, it, it he's just going to make those 10 drones in 30 seconds, and then we'll be back where we started. So he'll catch up and pass you, because those Hel just the threat of the Hellions and the map control and the presence and the creep spread denial are sometimes better than actually killing drones. But yeah, there are a lot of players. There are players who will never dive in and go for the drones, and then there are players who will do it every time. Uh, and you got to find a happy medium there. And it's usually better to just keep the Hellions alive You're a little low on and, and keep them busy. Well, we're starting with the Reaper expand. We're going to go see if there's gas. There is. He's mined 10. You start with 2250. You can tell if he has enough for speed. If he has le less than 2150 remaining, he's mined over 100 gas. Your dedication will be rewarded. Thank you, Snack Shack. Welcome back. We've got the Reaper. This is mostly to put a little bit of pressure on, maybe deny a third base for a while. I don't want to lose it. 
We're gonna make sure we have the add-on. Gonna go look for any... and get the reactor behind this. Oh, that reminds me. I should put... Okay, he has a pretty quick third there. No, z no drones? What am I doing? Figure out what you're doing with your life, Reaper. Up and down. He's still mining gas. It's important to know. I poke in. Try to see. Maybe get a glimpse of something. I'm not going to kill this, but... Get that orbital as soon as possible. Drop this mule. But there shouldn't be any tech coming out. Get this Marine back in the main. I am going to go for Cloak Banshees, but I'm going to start with a Viking. Um, to clear out the Overlords. Because the Cloak won't be done for a while. It's not about doing damage right now. It's about getting a better position later in the game. And that's what a lot of the early game in TVZ is about. Gonna go hit the third, see if he gets greedy. Wall this off. We take note that there's an overlord there, and I'll eventually send my Viking at it. This is not that risky. Just get a few drones there. Oh, looks like he had some zerglings on the other side of the map. That scared me. Did you see me jump there? Oh my god. A little bit of fancy micro. Get a third base started. I didn't expect those Zerglings. I think he was going for a drop overlord. So we're going to look for... I'm just doing a crisscross pattern on the map. Throw a nade. Research complete. I, I forgot to make a Banshee here. That was a little bit of a mistake. My two gases. I'm a little bit late on that as well. But he has no creep spread right now. I've added on two factories. I'm going to add on an armory. And we're going to be doing a Thor drop follow-up. So the key here is that I have the ability to build Hellbats eventually here. Okay, let's just target Overlords directly. He's getting some more gas on this side. I've got one Cloak Banshee. I, I wanted to go for two, but I've got one, which is okay. Make sure I have all this gas. I've got the armory on the way. I'm getting a reactor here. I have more than enough to just roast and toast. He's got a Hydralisk. One Hydra. Okay, I'm making a judgment call. Yeah, looks like he got greedy. You're able to target these down. The Banshee going to work over here. Getting more factories. I've killed three overlords so far. Getting two medevacs to bring the Thors along. Engineering Bay Depot. This has been a pretty sloppy start for me, to be honest. I'm going to bring this over here. We already saw he had the infestation pit, so he's getting very greedy. Behind the Thors, uh, behind the Thors, I am getting... What am I trying to say? I need to use my words. Uh, siege tanks. 
and blue flame. And I should have already started the plus one. So yeah, a pretty sloppy execution of this. We see, I didn't actually see any upgrades there. Scanning for a fourth base. He does not have many drones there. There's a chance of a spire. So I'm just going to put a turret around the edges. And I feel comfortable putting these turrets down. Because right now, I feel like I have a higher SCV count than he has a drone count. If I didn't, I probably wouldn't be so liberal with the turrets. But I feel pretty safe on that count. I kind of over scanning a little bit. Your supply one. We've all research complete. Hope additional supply. Blue flame is done. Keep the Thors with me. Uh oh. All out of minerals. No can do. This is a pretty mobile mech army. Is uh, the benefit of it. And you always want to be sending out some Hellions. Like, you always want to try to find an eight, like, all it takes is one Hellion run by. Four get shut down, and then one gets in and kills 20 drones. This is the point of the game, yes, throw away Hellions. It's time to throw away Hellions. So. Get the smart servos as well. Do I have it done? I don't. My plus one finished. Your supply block. doesn't do much You're but once again one gets in and that's Research all it takes complete. to put you in a good position let's see he does not have a spire that's also what we were looking for uh, to see a spire if he goes swarm host I want to be heavier on the Thors to actually shoot the locust before they get to me would be the objective there um, and then of course Thors are great if he switches to mutas and he doesn't have Right now, he doesn't have... I'm going to split off some Hellbats, because I can't be caught on Sieged. Hydras are pretty good if I'm caught on Sieged. Got these depots finishing. Not enough energy. He's going to move his Hydras around, so I'm going to send these Hellions in. Try to catch him out of position. And you see he's taking this base as well, and he is going Swarm host, so... Put him on hold position. And now we're playing against the locust waves now. Is how this is going to work. So I want to put on pressure. But also minimize the effectiveness of the locusts. I'm actually going to put my Thors into not high impact mode, but instead javelin missiles, uh, explosive payload, uh, in order to literally shoot the locust before they can get to me, is the plan. And the siege tanks need to be very well spread. I'm producing. The tank line runs real deep, though. Every volley that gets off. siege these up. Get the plus three mech weapons. I got most of the swarm host because he was mashing on the select all army hotkey for that last fight. Oh, there was a banshee there. 
But we get to this base. He did go Mutas, but we have another Thor here. I should have made a couple more Thors. I mean, that was the desperation move. The thing is, if I have any anti-air, he didn't really have the economy. It was a little bit sloppy to start, but as soon as we're getting towards that plus two, just pushing. I played a different game. I. Good game. All right, big hoss. Reminds me. Okay, bear with me here. When did I? No, that was this morning. Thank you, Quick Stab. Or that's um and if you can't watch all of it now this will be in the description on YouTube as well, if I ended up putting it, end up putting it there, which I probably will. Look in the description box below and make sure to smash that like button, boys. Can we get 1 million likes on this video? Can we do it? Can we do it? TVZ. Another learning opportunity. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a build that is a little out of style right now. At the highest level. Because Zerg players have kind of figured it out. Um, but can still be very effective. It's the 16 Marine 2 Medivac drop. Uh, it was the build for like six months in TVZ. It was almost the only build. It was like, are you doing the 2 1 1? Uh, or are you doing something weird? Um, but eventually, Zerg players learned that Hydralis are a good unit uh, and, and figured out how to defend early on. So the key with this, the biggest vulnerability is before the medevacs come out. So the first five minutes. Uh, your medevacs should be popping out by five minutes, is the idea. I'm going to get a Reaper, I'm going to expand, and then before I get my depot, my second depot, I'm getting my second barracks. It's an important part of having everything come together in a timely manner. A lot of people just reflexively get the second depot, and that's one of the examples of in Diamond, the little, the little I, I guess you could say, mistakes 
uh, that slow you down just a little bit, and then you do another one of them, and then that slows you down a little bit more, uh, and then suddenly you're 30 seconds late on the drop. Very slowly, all of a sudden. Gonna get that depot now. No more minerals, which makes you a Gonna get the factory god. and then the second gas. You're all out of minerals. No can do. No more minerals, which makes you Just keep pressure on. I really need to make sure like a baneling bust or like a roach ling push or something. All right. Get these guys actually into the gas immediately. We're going to go check if he has a third done yet. Doesn't look like it. Orbital immediately. And I want to make sure I'm not queuing up things like SCVs or, marine, or too many Marines. Because that will actually cut into my ability later on. So was, I'm going to rally down now. He's still making drones. We just poke in, get that little bit of vision. That gives me enough info. And then as soon as I have the gas, we're getting a reactor here. My stim is on the way on the tech lab immediately. And right around 37, 38 supply, I have enough for a depot. Now the objective of this is to control creep, force units. Uh, it's not to kill anything necessarily, but if you force out a ton of zerglings, you've killed, you've killed drones. Even if you don't touch any drones, you've killed drones because, get this, zerglings, not drones. Zerglings are not drones. Fun fact. Uh, so. He does have that speed done. Getting the double medevac. And if those medevacs are coming out by five minutes, you're in pretty good shape. Beyond can do it at like 4.30, but he's magical. So. Uh, and, and Hex. With skill. But behind this, I'm getting my third base, and I'm going to get... I'm going to go drop on this watchtower. We're going to get double engineering bay. Double gas. And what I like to do as a follow-up is actually one medevac and then uh, widow, two widow mines and some marines in it. I'm going to go as close as I can go. All right, we'll just drop right there. Get combat shields. Make sure I'm producing here. Stim in. See an opportunity? I'll go for the third. Get two into gas. He has to decide what he's going to do. He decides he's going to lose his third here. So scan. He's got a lot of... He was actually doing a big Ling Bane push here. I'm going to try to click on some of the Banes, but mostly we're going to get out of there. And I should have already... This is a mistake. I should have already added on additional barracks while I was doing this. Uh, I should have gone up to those five racks. So now we know this is out there. He has a lot of lings and banes. They were just a little out of position. So we got to be very careful. Forgot he had this. Let the Widow Mines connect. Let the Widow Mines connect. Your command center is better than ever. Except it can't transport work. Because we already knew what he wanted to do. He's actually getting kind of a scary amount of lings in here. 
Let the Widow Mines connect. Unfortunately, onto my Marines there. And then go into the main while I'm cleaning this up. That got a little dicey for a second, but... I still have a double drop. And remember, I killed his third, so... If we use some... Little fancy micro. Let's see if I can... We're going to hunt overlords with this now. So, despite all of that, I have, I'm in a great spot now. I have all my production. I have three bases. You can lose SCVs, but if you have three command centers and the Zerg doesn't have a third, that is about as good as you can ever ask for as uh, a Terran player. Like... If you're getting upgrades, you have a third base. Even if I had 15 SCVs right now, well, that would be about even, I would say. But yeah, if I had 15 SCVs in this position, I would still feel fine. Because he has 0-0 upgrades, he's getting Bane speed, but he doesn't have any gas at this base. He has to keep making Banelings, and Banelings die when they attack. Fun fact. Now, if he was going for, like, high... Like, a lot of Terran players add in tanks because Widow Mines are revealed after they shoot. Uh, the Widow Mines are very good early on because I can produce them very quickly. And I'm only really looking for that one shot. Your supply so. We're going to get the third. Just continue production, get concussive shells. I always forget concussive shells. Your dedication will be rewarded, God. Let the Widow Mine connect. That was actually good defense. But if the uh, Banelings are in front, you can kind of just stand and gun them down. Thank you, Bold of Terror, as well for the sub. But it is vulnerable. Baneling buffs are a big... Baneling bus usually before the drop goes out, not after, but he, he did it after, and it was still pretty vulnerable because I still have a lot of army on the map and not much at home. If I had made a bunker or two, um, okay, I don't know what we're on here. Uh, but yeah, as you saw, the vulnerability. But, at the same time, that attack is super, like, the more Banelings you make, the more all-in you are as a Zerg. If you don't have an economy, or four bases or something, any time you make double-digit Banelings is, is, you need to do damage pretty quickly, because you just spent hundreds of gas on it. And so our game more begins. Terran. Terran players are very lucky today. We have played every race at least a couple times, though. If I don't get Protoss again up to, or Zerg, if I just get Terran all the way to Diamond 1, then I will play a couple games explicitly of Protoss and Zerg. Maybe at some point I'll do this, but for each race individually. But, one, I'm lazy, and two, uh, I think it's still important, because if you're a Diamond Zerg, now this might this is a little bit uh, in my own self-interest of you watching the entire video, right? Uh, or the stream, or whatever. But if you're a Diamond Zerg, and you're really struggling in ZVT, maybe the best way isn't to look at a ZVT guide. The best way is to watch and play Terran and see what they die to. Right? If if you are actually in their shoes and getting them knocked off. MSF brings humanitarian medical assistance, including basic health care, perform proxy battle cruising, fight epidemics, rehabilitate and run hospitals. Oh yeah, for those who don't know, uh, all donations and bits from December, uh, I am donating to Doctors Without Borders or MSF. Medicine Sans Frontiers. I definitely butchered that pronunciation, but um, the first was three thousand two hundred forty dollars. I think uh, we're at about fourteen. We're going on five thousand total. So 
so we'll see if we can get to 5,000. It is the plan. But we're just a couple hundred off, I think. Alright, I should have gone for a factory and a marine. This is not a good TVP build. Um, what I'm doing right now is not very good. Uh, I kind of screwed it up. Because get it, if you don't get a factory quickly, then you're pretty vulnerable to pressure. Like, he already has a stalker here. I canceled that. If you can steal a Protoss' gas as a Terran, though, I would almost always take that opportunity. Because not having a second gas screws up almost everything a Protoss wants to do early on. Is, is the situation. Alright, we're gonna get a Cyclone out, which will lead into Siege Tanks later on. We're just looking for the tech here, if he has any. I believe that was a Twilight. I'm not 100% though. Let's see if the Stalker is ripe for killing. Thank you, Proxy BC. Let's kill cholera. What did what did she ever do to you? And I'm gonna open up with a Liberator. This isn't any special build or anything like that. I'm just kind of making this one up as I go along. I'm going to add two barracks afterwards, and we're going to turn this eventually into a stim timing. Just a bio timing. Because the best way that Protoss players in the newest patch, the newest update, uh, if you're watching this, the update you're playing on, is uh, actually pressuring a Protoss. And the best way to do it is just a straight bio pressure. Okay, fuck off. <laughs> no more of that. I'm gonna send this all the way out and around. We're gonna build a reactor on the point. Cause right now, like, do I really need Metavax? I barely have any units, so. Though he might do a blink pressure. A blink attack, rather. I'm gonna get a depot on the edge. In the way of no more minerals, which makes you a macro god. You're done. Now, this liberator, there's no kicker here. There's nothing that makes this liberator do damage. He can just get stalkers, and I'm gonna hold it there. It's pretty much just there because I had the gas early. Uh, you can't be too hasty on things like that. Well, I'm not sure. There might be a, an observer out here. That's how they build the pylons. They cut out the crystals, okay? Like a lightsaber or something like that. I'm going to get a turret at the front. This is, I mean, I guess it could be for DTs, but it's mostly, uh, it's mostly for pushing away observers if he gets a little greedy with them. Minerals, which makes you a it's just a good habit to have a turret there, for the most part. For that reason. I didn't even know that was there. It's just if something flew in. I didn't actually notice it. You can see it, but, like, you have to be looking. Did I not build any depots? Well, we're building three now. Build a depot. The real question is, do you have a third? If he has a third... Your dedication will be rewarded. Thank you. Lure Destroyer. He does not have a third. So, I will build mine. That's that's the, the trigger. If he doesn't have a third, I'll just continue building up, continue getting upgrades. Looks like he's going out for one. So, I'm going to have plus one. I'm going to have combat shields. I'm going to have stim. I have a couple medevacs now. 
your line of ready. And we see he wants to take a third, so I'm going to move out because by the time I hear an observer... Wait, do you hear that? You want a piece of me, boy? There it is. Research complete. Find a better, more organized Don't play with music or you're going to lose every game. We read you. Kappa. Armed and ready. Not enough energy. This better be good. Not enough minerals. As you have been waiting on. We're going to move up. And after, I'm going to bring the lib in after I start this attack. Because that's right. Oh, beautiful timing. Research complete. Because he's going to be distracted at the front, or he should be. The lib is, well, he's not mining from here. And Mass Stalker doesn't work. Uh, because siege tanks. No matter how many shield batteries you might have. GG. Good game! But just tank pushes, and usually the trigger is a third. A lot of Protoss players will take their thirds much earlier, so you kind of just put it together, and as soon as you have your upgrades finishing. But if you can do it while he's building a third base, that's usually the ideal time to strike, because he's invested a lot and he hasn't got any return on investment yet. As a toss, how do I come to the siege tanks effectively in that kind of situation? Uh, you can't come at it. Well, one, don't have mass stalker. Two, uh, have sentries for guardian shield can help out. And ideally, you have at least a few zealots or adepts to tank a few shots while you start the fight. Because if it's just stalkers, you're, it doesn't matter how you engage, really. It's a numbers game. All right, PVZ. And uh, it looks like the random gods are not frowning upon us today. I'm going to go with the Stargate opener. Now, the Stargate opener uh, takes a little bit of micro. Um, not too much. Having an Oracle. The Oracle is the Swiss Army Knife of the Protoss. It has the ability to actually do damage and kill workers. It has detection and tracking of units with revelation. And it has Stasis Ward for defense and offense. It can do it all. Your dedication will be rewarded. Thank you, Alan. And welcome back. If he has an expansion, okay, I will use my second chrono on probes. If I, he didn't, I would save it. He's getting gas. Let's go down for my expansion. And obviously walling off is something to practice. Uh, it takes a while to master, but that should be the right size. Did I fuck it up? I think I did. Oh my god. Oh my god, look away. Look away. It's terrible. Oh my god. Fuck it! We're so, if it, when, it, when it comes to walling off, what I want you to understand is not do anything I ever do. Ever. Just don't do it. Ah, uh, that's my guide on walling off. Alright. I...
We'll just make a shield battery there and it'll all be better. Chrono Boost, the Adept. Let's go check if he has this third. You're out of gas. Do you have two in a geyser somewhere? I, uh... Oh, but knowing if he has a third, like, I'm going to send my Adept for that info as well. There. There, that'll do. That might be Stalker type. Yeah, he doesn't have a third yet, so... This is when alarm bells start to go off. Like, usually you would go for a third by this time. Where shall we march? Forward, glory to the He does have a third. Okay. We're gonna get an Oracle to start and then a Phoenix to kill Overlords. Is the plan. You're all out of minerals, so no can do. Lay a chrono in there. Gonna get a pylon on the edge of my base. You've and then a pylon line of mineral credit. Behind this mineral line. We are And a phoenix, which is going to look for overlords like this one. You must Probably shouldn't have flown past that area, but. Out of minerals, but your workers are on it. And then get a robo before I go out for a third so I can start my tech quicker. This has become a lot more popular because hydralis timings, if you open up. I see he doesn't quite have the score done yet. So I'll take a couple kills, and I'll just worry about this. We're going to get the gases. I'm going to get warp gate. I'm going out for a third base now. And the oracle's eventually going to let me know whether I need a robo bay to get Colossus very quickly. We're also going to get the Twilight Council. I was kind of surprised when I first saw Hero doing this. Um, but it makes a lot of sense with... How the how good Colossi are for one. Well, let's confirm. If he doesn't have a layer done, I'm not getting a Robo Bay quite yet. But if he does, if he doesn't have a layer at all, well, we're not getting a Robo Bay at all. He does not have any layer of any kind. So we're gonna get a Stasis Ward, and that's a nice one. Well, if he doesn't. Does he have a roach one? No, he has a baneling nest. You know what? Maybe we want that rubble bay after all. So upset, he can't build there. It looks like it's gonna be a Ling Bane all in. So let's get shield batteries across the board. You must construct additional pylons. Construct additional pylons. Because all we need to do is survive. Well, that's one way to get in. He killed my cyber core. So that means I can rebuild the wall better than before. I jammed on the select army hockey in a slight panic. I shouldn't have done that. I thought I might need the Oracle, though. And I'm going to get Chrono out of Colossus. Get extended Thermal Lance. We'll see if he tries to drone up now. Nope, it looks like there's going to be another round there. No drones at this base. Tag this. So yeah, it looks like there's going to be another round of this coming in. There it is. Shield batteries are good. You got the immortal. That's about it. Do a little bit of fancy micro here. Sorry, probes, but... Warp 
Camping there is strictly prohibited. And I should have added on more gates way earlier, but I didn't. No more minerals, which makes you a back rope. Now we've got a second Colossus. Just gonna tag and get out. A little shift click there. A mineral patch just went kaput. It seems like another round is on the way. Not entirely sure. Research complete. But we're actually gonna wall off this side now. You're not playing. Mineral field empty. Send those wow, research complete. Time for a timing push. Oh shit. Well now I've trapped in all my probes. Glory to the Well. But now we have all the gates up. Get plus one. Keep chrono boosting out. Is he making a bunch of, uh... Warping there is strictly prohibited. Banelings anywhere around here? Let's see if he's tried to macro it out. Does not look like it. Looks like there's another round coming. Honestly, a couple Archons would have ended this game a while ago. I'm gonna step past. Oh, hello. As we just hold on to everything. Kill the Zerglings. Mineral field empty. Send those work. Guess what? More lings are coming. Nobody could have expected that. We're gonna shield battery this. Okay. And now this ends. This is how this ends. With great big balls of energy. Now we have about, this is about as hard as you can counter. Zerglings and Banelings now. If I had Storm, I guess, maybe it would be a little bit more. We're pretty much at the edge of this now. You gotta admire his persistence. Um, I mean, it's really hard to transition out of this, so. Let us begin. Our window is short. He's got some drones there. Mineral field depleted. You can't throw. I think it's my turn to attack then. We're gonna leave two Archons at home in case he tries to counterattack. Because he's trying to drone up now. A little bit. That is a that is a ling killing army. Oh my. Good game. Well, that is that is how you counter Zergen. There you go. That is. <laughs> That's Oh. Uh, <laughs> That's a that's a quite a graph right there. Doctor Boyce the Bounteous claiming a, a bountiful harvest. Is bounteous even a word? That's not a real word. That's a made up word. Like uh global warming. Thank you, Sixer Sage. Welcome back. Ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes. Not ten minutes. Two months. It, it was ten minutes ago. It says it right there. All right. And how appropriate we get Zerg again. And we're live. 
So the random gods have been very kind with the distribution of races and matchups. The second Overlord I'm going to send out in this location uh, and then send it across because if he's going to proxy Rex, it's likely going to be in this area. Not 100%. But uh, it's likely, so. And the Overlord, like, if I go hedge first, unless I drone scout, I'm not going to see it before the pool finishes anyway, so. Now, Overlord's in TVZ. The first Overlord is going to get in, see if he's expanding, maybe get a poke, and, uh, well, there you go. There's probably more behind that. So what we're going to do is bring a couple drones down to start to block the bunker. I'll put this OV on the high ground. Okay, we need to block the bunker harder than that. So there's a demonstration of how that works. Your forces are under attack. And well, that overlord paid off, didn't it? Can this overlord make it? No. Unfortunately that kinda sucks. But um he sent everything back home. Okay. Spawn more overlords. How are you supposed to become the swarm with no supply? Spawn more overlords. And that's why you send your overlord. Queen complete, ready to creep. Not enough supply. Hold V until you're out of minerals. These things were okay. Well, he, we see he's expanding. Oh, he just anti-microed pretty hard there. AKA did micro he didn't need to do. And the boys are pulled. So, if he's expanding and he's still building marines, I will now max out on roaches. Complete. Not enough supply. Now, Hydraling Bane is kind of your prevailing strategy for uh, ZVT, but I'm so far ahead that I don't need to really respect what he's doing at all, um, because if he's doing something like that, like, he might have gas, but nothing that's going to threaten me. I have an extra queen. I'm going to go up to, like, 60-something, 60 62 drones, maybe. And then, from there, we're just going to max out on roaches and run them over, is the plan. Not enough energy. Because if he tries to do a bio-push follow-up, well, I'll have the roaches. If he tries to get greedy economically, well, there's good luck with a third base. I'm making a few lings in case he's, like, right... If he moved out right now with, like, 15 marines and all his SCVs, he could kill me. That's the only real option he has for that. And I make my lair and all my tech down here. One, because it's less likely to be scouted. Two, because you don't mine out of your second base as quick as you mine out of your main. 
and three, because your army is more likely to be on the map and not in your main. So the main base is vulnerable, uh, and it's a liability as time goes on, whereas the natural base is safer um, and more useful. So that's why I usually like to make most of my tech there. Looks like he is going bio. Not enough energy. All right, sixty two drones. Uh oh, units out of energy. Not enough. Your queen make sure we're hitting those injects. I'm starting to make roaches now. He has no more energy. Double medevac drop. Mean to interrupt, but you're under attack. This is actually gonna supply me supply block me a bit. And I don't like it, but I'm gonna go rogue charger. Because if the medevacs continue, which he shouldn't lose the medevacs, he should just not be able to do anything with the units, is the simple version. He dropped out some of them. Not enough supply. Hold Gonna v. continue plus two here. We've got the creep across the board. Not enough energy. But this is a situation where Roach Hydra is not a bad call. Those workers to a Got the overlords. Uh oh. There's a double drop up there. How are you I wonder if it's the same one. With no supply. He's angling straight for the main. I'm actually getting some hydras out now. He might have the third. I'm not sure. Mineral field depleted. And he lost the medevac with the units you in it. He doesn't have a third right now. Complete. Transferring drones with that camera location hotkey. And the queen didn't die. No more minerals, which makes you a macro god. We're just gonna attack. There's no reason not to attack. Now I've dealt with what medevacs you had on the map. Upgrades finishing is not really a concern. I've got plenty of army. It should just be a numbers game. We have one tank. Boys. No more minerals, which makes you a Let's go up the ramp. He fights the that like he had the right idea. Double siege tank production was the right call. That was a good move. But like from shutting down the uh racks early on, that was just too much. What number are we on? 11? And that's why overlords are so important. Why do you not like Roach Hydra? Well, Roach Hydra in an even money game 
I, it doesn't have any benefit over over Hydra Bane. Like, it's just worse than Hydra Bane uh, in most ways. And that's the simple version. Because roaches are slow and clunky and cost a lot of supply. And, so and don't shoot up. And don't kill marines very quickly. And then we're back to Terran. We're gonna do mech again. I'm just switching back and forth, mech bio, mech bio. We played enough Terran versus Zerk. I play usually on Emerald on planet side. If it's any time in the PM uh, in America, but I play on Miller, the EU server, if it's like at the end of the stream, because uh, there aren't, there just aren't that many people playing on US East at five in the morning. So, this is a pretty large map, but you have to take it. There's a lot of counterattack paths you got to take into account. Every Terran, especially in Diamond, since we're doing a Diamond to Master Guide, right? Every Terran player knows the feeling of, all right, we're getting some good harass done. Uh, these Hellions are getting some work. I killed five, six, seven drones. All right, we're going to pull back, control the creep spread, sending my Banshee in, and... Oh, 12 Zerglings ran in and killed all my SCVs in my net. You are quite literally... No, no one can tell me they don't know that feeling as a Terran player. It is a very common feeling. Okay, that is a... a pull first? That's not a pull first. I'm being dumb. It's just a pretty safe pull. Like, he made it almost right after the hatchery. Let me get the second guess. I'm, this is looking for any overlords that are a bit out of position. Start the reactor. I don't get too fancy. Make sure I have three out of three in gas. I have no idea. Maybe his overlord's already on that little high ground area. I'm not sure. Is there an SCV? This is why we turn health bars on, boy. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, there are some pro players who play without all health bars. I can't imagine ever playing like that. I really like having the health bars. Like, it's a big deal. It's a big part of it. Okay, so he doesn't have another... He doesn't have a third base yet. I, I don't think, right? Back after four months. Only another eight to go Welcome back, Walk. Also, thanks for the guys home. Uh, just done a draw. Okay, so that's a bit suspicious. He should have. That's an Evo chamber for what is that? Plus one carapace, maybe. Hmm. Interesting. I kind of screwed up the build a little bit, so on the bright side, I can just be like, "All right, we're going for a third command center." Because get a Viking, and I'm starting cloak though. God damn it! That feeling! He really wants to delay this? That means he has an overlord right there. He's not gonna get that. Like but there is an overlord. Right up that high ground. We're gonna get two factories behind this. It's important to add on your factories. A lot of mech players 
aspiring mech players just don't get their production up in time. And that's the easiest way to die with mech. You just... Because mech, you'll find yourself banking up money really quickly, even if it feels like you're broke. So that was just a random timing. He didn't even know I was moving out. I guess so. He has a lair done already? What is that for? What is he gonna do with a lair? I didn't find anything. I'm getting an NG Bay. Hmm. I'm wondering now, why do you have a lair done and no lair tech? It might have just now finished. There's an option, but... Okay, I'm saving up for Thor's here. He doesn't have a third. Gonna stand. He's just now getting a third, so. This is almost just a scouting banshee, really. Show me your secrets! I need to go see what he's doing. Why do you have no air tech? Is it like a proxy spire or something? Like. I haven't seen that in a while. Is it a Nidus? I don't have vision on this corner of the base. But where would he put it? Like, where would he hide it? The wheels are turning, but I'm not sure, like... Get blue flame and smart servos. Oh my god! Well, that answers that question, doesn't it? Though my buildings are in the way, so my Thors can't really get through. So, uh, interesting idea, but interesting does not necessarily mean good. He didn't need a lair for that, is the weird part, like... There's a roach one. It's a, it's a little late. We should be able to just go across the map here and... Well, do winning-related activity. Get there, Thors, and three Banshees, like, and I'm about to have Blue Flame. Look at this creep, though. Impressive. I like it. Transformation systems prime. Run your workers away. You need those. Oh wait, it's not even a wall. Thors eventually will get here. This is why you bring them out of there. <laughs> the upgrade complete. Yeah, I did not wall this off correctly. No one lives forever. Not enough. He attempted the counterattack, but fight or fight. Good game. All right, one more. That was original. Ambassador, Ambassador Yox, Jox, Jox. Yeah, something like that. 
Thank you, Reeps Pones, for giving the gift of winter to John Luke Picard, 88. Ooh, what is that portrait? Is that the Dahaka co-op portrait? I've never seen that one, though. Another game, another learning opportunity. A really good split of rate. I think a little bit skewed towards Terran, but I'm glad uh, random chance. And appropriately, a random player. You think he's lying? It would be hypocritical for me to assume he's lying. All right. He's not lying. He's just scouting at like the zero second mark. Maybe he thought I was lying. Which makes you a Is he actually gonna block the expo? Is that the play here, Lothor? He's on patrol, so I can cut it off. I'm actually just going to get rid of it. And he didn't cancel, so that actually hurts him. I like my cheese grilled kappa. And he has no gas. Is important to note. Very important to note, which means no reaper, which means not having this cyber core for a few seconds isn't the end of the world. Thank you, Chris. Oh my god, nobody sees that. What? No, the STV coming back home from being annoying. Intercepted the probe. You've maxed your line of mineral credits. Actually that pylon probably should have been on the low ground, but before the shields came back. You must construct additional piles. It should have been on the low ground because there's nothing I can really, like, if he doesn't have gas, his marines just have to walk up. Like, that's all they can do. So. We're going to start with a robo. No can do. I'm gonna go to the left side so I can engage from the high ground. Um, is the plan? Because if he's just sitting on the top of the ramp with like three marines, I can't really do anything. But if I'm on even footing, then I can micro against them. Gonna get two more gates here. An NG bay, a turret. Well, I am not going to be able to attack him for a while, but I don't need to. Get those Colossi out. So there are two options. One, he's going to go defensive mech, or two, he's just playing really defensive and going bio. Either way, he can't really touch me before I get Colossi out. There's a Reaper coming across now, but two volleys will kill it. A bit late on a Reaper scout. <laughs> Your dedication will be rewarded. Do what I do. Build 
get these gases. Thank you, Proxy Battle Cruiser, giving the gift of winter to Kinam Krindar. Nailed it. Not enough minerals. Okay. He has double. Oh no no no! I almost went too far. He knows the obs is here. Run, 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 run! Okay, I'm leaving. Get some sentries out. Might as well go for the double forge here. This is a very defensive map, so it, it means it's hard to attack in. And the distance is very long. That is a widow mine drop if I've ever seen one. Um. You must construct additional pylons out of minerals, but your workers are on it. Not enough. Minerals. Here it comes. We've got those observers in play for just this scenario. No more minerals, which makes you a back road. Did not go as planned. My Twilight's a little bit on the late side. I should have already had it by, like, the time the first Colossus You've came out. Your line of mineral but, uh, I didn't have it till, like, the second. He came over to this side. I think he probably has one Whittle Mine left in it, so he's going to try to get something with it. Research complete. We'll just send the Stalkers out. Nope. I guess not. I'll get Blink. Your probe is I have a so lot of stalkers, so. He can't build there. <laughs> How do you know when a Protoss player is really famous? When they have a lot of stalkers. Upgrade complete. Time for a timing push? Why 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 did the Colossus fall over? Because it was imbalanced. I should be adding on gates now. You must construct additional pylons. You're all out of minerals. No can upgrade complete. I don't have the back base now, but you can't warp in on top of stuff. Looks like he's going to take the forward third. Or he's going to try to. I'm just queuing up charge so I don't forget it. Mineral field depleted. Also, I should probably have one more Colossus. It's a bit awkward. It's a bit annoying to move up and down here uh, as well. It's a lot of Vikings. Okay, no more Colossus. Just more Storm. Your dedication will be rewarded. We're just going to have one flanking Storm as the plan. Ah, research complete. Time for a timing push. Wait, is he going up the front? Research complete. It's hard to tell. I need to have a little bit of time. We'll just leave the army here. Looks like he is. Not enough minerals. Upgrades done. Bring in the flanking storm. That's a lot of cyclones you got there. They're attacking your base. We require more investing gas. Like, really heavy on the clones. We shall stand. We all. 
stalkers counter clones, but clones also counter stalkers. if you morph the Archon. Okay, this is, we're doing a science experiment, boys. Because I'm in a very commanding lead now. What happens if you morph the Archon in the squares? I think exactly what you expect is about to happen. The Guardian of the Squares! Well, he will protect that one location in particular. Mineral field empty. Sacrifice. Warping there is strictly prohibited. Mineral patch just went through your probe. So you must construct additional pylons. I think he has the gold. Maybe. What is all this noise? But yeah, I saw he was playing super defensive. I got the upgrades. I got multiple forms of splash damage. Oh, the flank storm. You got probes and punish the enemy attacking your base. Get the war prism. I use the select all army key to find the war prism there. Plus three attack is about to finish, not that that's a critical component. But from here, I mean, we have what it takes. Mineral field depleted. Holding down shift to warp in those zealots quicker. Hey, stop fighting, Templar. They can fight now with their little fucking squirt guns that they gave them. They do, with plus three attack, they do seven damage per hit. A sentry does nine. <laughs> and they attack slower. It's just so the AI of the Templar doesn't drip them in. But, uh, I think we'll take questions for a few minutes to wrap up part one of the Diamond to Master's Guide. Getting to Diamond 1. Uh, what, 13 and 0? But there you go. That'll be up on, well, when it's up on YouTube, make sure to smash that like button. We're looking for one million likes. Uh, the replays will be in the description box below. How do you break a turtle mech as Terran Bio? Uh, you don't continue going by it. Like, if they're well turtled up and you can't do anything, then you pretty much just have to outdo what they're doing. You should be able to take the map and get map control and a better economy, and then eventually go like a range liberator Viking battlecruiser. It's like, no, but I want to not make the units he's making to beat him. That's too bad. What's a Terran's best chance against Toss? Is early Cyclone in the mech? Uh, mech is not recommended. Um, Cyclones can be good early, but they drop off heavily uh, over time. I mean, they can work, but I wouldn't recommend it. How do you stay consistent with supply gain? Uh, that's a very large question. You just continue building units throughout. Um, but use the five second rule. Every five seconds you try to do something different. How do you identify a Terran doing a doom drop? Uh, you see the medevacs mostly. Like, if the army is not at home where it should be, you should have vision around your base, no matter if you're Terran, Zerg, or Protoss, uh, to ideally see it coming before it does. As a Protoss, what army comp do you do with defensive Terran, defensive mech? Tempest? I mean, you can go like Carrier Tempest, or just Tempest supported by Storm, and just your standard ground army. But you have like half a dozen Tempests, uh, and either he has to make a ton of Vikings, or he eventually gets poked down. 
How soon should I be taking a fourth base as a Zerg? Now, it's not as true in ZvZ, but usually by the time you're getting 50 to 60 drones, you should be thinking about a fourth. Which could be six minutes, it could be eight. Uh, it could be earlier even, but around there. There are some good Terran timing attacks. You've got the 2-1-1, uh, the two medevac stim timing. You've got, I, I have a guide on the Thor drop build as well against Zerg. There are some tank pushes out there. You get like three siege tanks and then a bunch of bio and a couple medevacs and you hit a pro toss. What's a solid toss builder for a noob to learn? First, uh, gate expand into a robo quickly and then three total gates. Robo three gate with a gate expand. Uh, you can look at the basic protons guy. What's the best way to defeat Bass Void Rays of Zerg? Um, queens, Hydras, Infestors, uh, pretty much anything but Hydras on their own. Like, if they have 20 Void Rays and 20 Charge Lots, you can't just make 30 Hydras. You need, like, 10 Bane Lanes. But... If I'm playing Marines, Medivacs, and Tanks, when should I upgrade Tanks? Before or after Marines? Uh, after, because you need to get 1-1 one, one for your Marines, or at least plus 1, before you're even really getting the Armory if you're doing Marine Tanks. Uh, but Marine upgrades take priority, but you can't neglect the Tanks. Why should you get more than 66 workers if 66 is 3 base saturation? Um, because, one, you can mine with more than 16. I have a guide on this as well. Um, but s just because you have 17 workers doesn't mean nothing's happening. You can go up to 24 workers on a base and still get more money. Uh, it drops off as you get closer to 24. But if you have 20 workers on a base, you're still getting more income than if you have 16. It's just 16 is the most efficient, not necessarily the most income. And you may lose workers at one point. If you lose, if you have 66 workers and then a widow mine hits nine of them, maybe having those four or five extra workers is nice. Or you take a fourth base, for example. How do you decide what to warp in for Protoss drop? I mean, it kind of depends. Usually it's it's units that are, are going to be hard to kill and annoying, like Zealots. It's very rare I'm warping in like Stalkers to a main base or something. Or DTs if I think they don't have detection. Um, but it, it's rare to warp into anything, well, pretty much stalkers or sentries are the only other things, but... In the early games, ZVZ had data link floods where I spent a few more larvae on drones than my opponent. Do you have any tips to help with this? Uh, I mean, always have a bane link. Always have a defensive bane link. Um, and get that bane link nest early. Pretty much every ZVZ... I, I get the mainly nest before the third base. If we're talking like they did an early pool, that's a little different. You just got to get better at walling off with queens, um, getting a spine up. But if you don't always have, you always need to have one more bane lane no matter what. No matter how much you think you need all your banes right now, if there's not one bane. Thank you, Royal Prospecting, for giving the gift of winter to Juggernaut, Jace. Are, star are stalkers good versus mass void or not? No, they're not. Uh, Archons, well, Stalkers with Archons in front, because Voids can charge up and do extra damage to Stalkers, but Archons soak a, a metric fuck ton of damage. Is it better to have a shield battery than a cannon in the mineral line? If you don't have a cannon, it's better to have a shield battery, but if you do have a cannon in the mineral line, the shield battery should be outside of it most of the time. Ideally a cannon, but shield batteries are cheaper and easier to get. So, uh, if you're up against things like Lings, uh, or marine drops, a shield battery can suffice. Is Glosses Void Ray Stalker Your Zealot a good option? Um, yes, but oh, having... No, well, and I would rather have Archons than Void Rays. Because Void Rays are expensive. Um, and the same things that counter Void Rays a lot of the time can counter Colossus because Colossus can be hit by Anti-Air. Um, Archons are just an amazing unit. Try Archons. And also, they don't take Micro. I mean, they... You know what I mean. Thank you, Sam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When should I go for roaches and when should I skip it and go for lair tech? Uh, you really only want to make roaches before lair if you know they're committed to an early two base or one base, really. Uh, like, if you know, if you see a Terran has, like, two factories and is going for Hellions, um, or a Protoss is going for seven gateways of adepts or something, um... Or a Zerg is going for roaches themselves. 
but ideally you want to defend with Lings, but Roaches can be the stopgap. But if they aren't doing anything like that, like if they're doing a 1-1-1, one, 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 or they're opening with a Stargate, uh, or they're taking a third base in ZVZ, then a lot of the time, well, in ZVZ you want the Roach one before Lair usually. But. Is there any quick dirty ratio for Archon versus Storm, HTs, and Army? I mean, you want as much Storm as possible. Um, so, uh, the amount of tiers, okay. If you're Diamond League, I would say uh, you want at least three Archons. You want at least a one-to-one. -one. Um, up to, like, five. Five Storm Templar are usually enough. Um, and if you're below Diamond League, I would say two-to-one. Two Archons per one Storm Templar, because Archons are going to save you much more than pretending like you can Storm well. Hydraling Bane, planning to go Broods, melee or range? Uh, that's a pretty big question, but melee usually, because it's more important for the Banelings to get uh, the upgrade Lings and Banes than the Hydras, because the Hydras already have a ton of DPS. Uh, and if you're going straight to Broods, the Broodlings benefit from melee attack, but that's not really a big deal. It doesn't really matter. Uh, as Zerg, do you have enough time to tech to Hydras and Protoss Rush for Void Rays? I mean, you don't need to just rush for Hydras, you can just make like three queens. Queens are amazing. Queens just kind of counter Void Rays. If he's just rushing, which implies he's attacking you, you will you can have Queens on your side of the map and just kind of defend it. Stalker or Adept opening against uh, Protoss and against Terran. Stalker against Zerg. Uh, Adept. <laughs> All right. How to lose the fear of losing. We're going to wrap it up with this question. Um, how to lose the fear of losing. Now, here's the thing in StarCraft. Uh, no one cares about you. It's not even a team game. In team games, people care about you. They might care very little, and they might care that you're so bad and tell you about it. Um, and just blame all their problems on that, but people care. In StarCraft, no one cares. Only you care. Are you a Diamond 1? Did you just get promoted this season? No one really cares. The only person who cares is you, uh, is the short version. Every song I download has to pass a series of rigorous so, tests to answer So, the only way you're going to get better is to play more games, and it's not about winning necessarily. Um, How dope are the drops? It's not about winning. It's about improving. And, and the way you can do that, there are easy ways to do that. Uh, say today, um, say today that instead of I want to try to win 10 games, because you might not, you might lose all 10. That's just how it goes sometimes. I want to get supply block less than 10% of the time. Or I want to make sure I get 50 workers by 6 minutes. And that way, even if you lose, you can still win. You, you set a goal, an achievable goal, an important goal, and you can reach that. SC2ReplayStats.com can help you with that. Uh, it sh breaks down statistics way more than the terrible score screen. Um, just in general. Uh, I still lose. I lose hundreds of games every season. And there's always something to learn from each of these games. But sometimes you don't want to just go into the replay and be like, what did I do wrong? You just say, I did something right. So I didn't get supply blocked. Or I built enough workers. And eventually, over time... It comes together and you'll improve. And remember this as well. That even if you're not ranking up, if your MMR is not improving, that doesn't mean you're not improving. Because everyone is improving. That just means you're improving at a, a medium rate. Um, because everyone else is also improving uh, at certain rates. That means you're better than 50% of people. If you don't win or lose any MMR today... That doesn't mean you got better or worse. Even if you lost MMR, that doesn't mean you got worse. It just means you didn't improve as quickly as everyone else today. But maybe tomorrow, you can do a little bit better. Uh, but it, it it's not going to be 50 games. It's not going to be 100 games. It's not going to be a week. It's not going to be a month. But you don't play StarCraft because you want instant gratification. You play, you play StarCraft for the same reason that people go running. Or uh, do any sort of math ever even on stream. Um, it's not because it's easy, or go to the moon. It's not because it's easy, it's because it's hard. And that's why 
we all play StarCraft, and that's why you should stop being a bitch and hit the play button. This was part one of my Diamond to Masters guide. In the next part, we'll be tackling Diamond 1 to Masters. Hopefully you enjoy it.